Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Boulder Canyon. I am going to continue on with our spraying job today. We are going to go right the way around this field and we are going to finish up all of this. Well, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go around once, go right around the outside edge, and then we're going to start working our way up and down the field. We will do the usual and knock that sign over. Um... Make sure I am properly going out to the very edge of the field. This is all we've got left to do. This is the only thing we've got left to do is spray the whole field. Once this is done, we've then done everything and we can fast forward time right through until the harvest if we want to. And I might well do that except that, um, well, we'll have to keep an eye on the sheep. Just make sure that the sheep are doing all right. We are getting close to filling up the pen of sheep. We've not got that many days left. We're getting a, two sheep per day, or we're just under two sheep per day. And I think we've only got space for about eight sheep left anyway. So we're pretty close to maximum on the sheep. I don't want to sell any, and I don't want to be getting... I don't want to get to a point where we've got no more room for sheep. So when we've got 79 sheep, I need another pen already set up so that we can start moving some of the sheep from the pen that they're in currently over to the new pen. And it's very, very important that we do actually do that. We've got to make sure that we've got room to expand so that the sheep can just keep going. They can keep multiplying and we can keep upping our numbers. And it, it's, it's very important to me that we're able to do that. I want to be able to have as many as possible because the more sheep we get, the more money we get. The more sheep we've got, the more wool we generate, the more we end up with. And then once we've got our big pen full of sheep, I'm going to sell the small pen, and I'm going to swap that one over to a big pen as well, and then we're going to end up with two large pens of sheep. Now, the aim of the map is that we need to get one large pen of every type of animal on the map. So we're going to be wanting to get a large pen of chickens fairly soon. That's, that's one that's quite high on the priority list. Um... But I'm not too worried about that one yet. That the chickens are going to be down here along with the sheep because they produce more pallets as well. Um, we want them fairly close to the cell point so that we can quickly and easily deal with them and shunt them out the way. So we'll that's that's kind of the plan for the chickens is we'll put them near the sheep, but the the actual sheep will be quite close by to where the existing pen is. One thing I did say, and I asked you all, and you said that we should definitely keep the sheep pens as close together as possible. If I'm, I'm sort of thinking that two large sheep pens would be our target on this one with, with the sheep. And yes, we only actually need one large sheep pen. We don't need two large sheep pens. But getting a second large sheep pen, I think is a good idea because we can end up making more money out of it. And that extra money will go a long way towards getting our cows and our pigs. Now, the pigs is not necessarily all that difficult. We've just got... It's getting the food and keeping the food going for the pigs. That's going to be the trickier part. It's going to be the challenge. Um, but for the cows, it's going to be buying the cows in the first place. That is going to be the difficult part with the cows. They are expensive to buy. And it's going to take us quite a while to be able to get them. And it's probably going to be the last thing that we do is get the last of the cows. So that we've got a full pen and then they've all got food. So all of the animals need to be at 100% production. Except possibly, I have said possibly we will have an exception with the pigs when we won't have them at 100% production because... Ooh, not quite able to take all of that. I was hoping I'd be able to take all the rest of it. We'll load it up when we've finished. I'm thinking we'll probably have enough here now to finish anyway. Um, to, to finish the field off. Um, so, yeah, we, we've kind of got this thing where the, the cows, they are definitely going to be the most expensive and the most difficult bit to get for our little challenge that we're going to be doing. Now the other little challenge, actually I'm going to go down the other end of the field and I'm going to start down here and I'm going to let the machine come up because, oh no, no no, two widths would be just fine. So actually I'm going to bring that back over to here 
And then he'll go up the field. So bring him back to there. There we go. Right, I'll start that one there. And then he'll turn round just at this end. And then he'll go all the way up. And then he'll go all the way back down again. And that will go right up to the other end of the field. It's because of the, the width of this one compared with the width of the actual crop there. I've got a bit that I've missed. I'll come back and I'll get that after. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to get that afterwards. I'm going to get that right now. And then I'm going to line this sprayer up again. And I'll go over it once more. So I'll just take that bit out there. Like that. And then... I'll bring you over here. Like this. There we go. And... There we go. Right, that's going to work perfectly. And then he's going to turn around at the top end of the field. He's going to come back down again, but I'm not sure if he's going to properly get everything. Doesn't really matter, I suppose. He's, he's on his way and he's doing his job. He's, he's doing everything that we want him to do. So, I get the sheep pen and I set that one up. While this one's working, I can actually go and have a look at some of this, can't I? We can go over here. And, I, you know, I can't. I can't actually go and take a look at what it's going to be like because we're minus $89 at the moment, minus $90. And increasing because, uh, yeah, well, we're using the hired help. And I've got no shame with using the hired help. But what I can do is I can go to this and I can go to start landscaping. So I can see the tractor there doing stuff. And we can have a look over here. So we're going to put a large sheet pen over here. But what I want to do is I want to make sure that I've got enough room in here to put another large sheet pen. So I want to be able to extend that one out. And I'm not going to go any closer to the barn. Um, but I'm not sure how much bigger the large sheet pen is, how much further it comes out. So we need to find that out. And then we want to put the other large sheet pen, which is going to have to go up this side. Uh, that one's going to go in there so that the large sheet pen can go this side once we scrap this one. And that way then we'll be able to have two of them and we'll have them fairly close together. So we're going to have to plan that out carefully. I did think that I was just going to keep this one as he is, but I've decided against that. decided I'm going to do it a little bit differently. And so we'll, we'll sort of have to see how that works out. I think it's going to be okay. I think it's going to work out quite nicely. That's come down there quite well. Although we have got a little green strip all the way up through, which is going to be a little bit tiresome. Because he's, he's got to go all the way up through it. It's, it's not going to take too long. Um, okay, he's, he's doing fine. So let's go back to our landscaping. We can see him up there in the distance. Uh, yeah, so we have a large sheep pen here. Which does mean that this road would eventually come out over here somewhere. I'm not exactly sure. We'll see once we get the first large sheep pen. We can see exactly where. And then we can plan it. And we can plonk it down over here next to this stone. And we sort of have the two of them facing each other with a track going in between them. We'll leave it wide enough that we've got plenty of room for turning around and working in there. And then we're going to want the chickens. We're going to want a large pen of chickens. And that will be the next thing that we get after that. Now there may be room in here but I doubt it somehow I don't think there will be so we've either got to put the chickens down over here or we go up beside the sheep and put them over here and I'm thinking over here would be the best spot to put the chickens um and if we zoom back over here this is kind of empty land there isn't a great... I mean, we can turn this bit here if we harvest that bit. That can be used for producing grass. So that won't be too bad. But, yeah, I'm, I'm not really 100% sure how we're going to figure that bit out going down into that narrow point down over there. Um, one other thing that we are going to want to do is we're going to be wanting to buy some more land. Now, I did ask you in a general question quite some time ago... And almost everybody said that you want me to buy this one next. Now, this is $360,000. Uh, $365, Most of you said don't get this one because the majority of this land we can't actually use. So it's not going to be very useful. Whereas this one over here, this is useful all the way around. We've got large flat level areas in here. This is going to be the single most useful one. So this is the one that we're going to be going for. Now... Are you going to be able to turn around properly without causing any problems? We've had a lot of overlap. A lot of the land has just had a double layer of spray on it, which is not brilliant. 
It is kind of a bit of a waste of spray, but there's not really a lot that we can do about that. All I want for this one, though, is for it to stop reversing and turn around. But it doesn't look like it's going to... I'm, I'm, I'm going to watch it now. I'm going to see what it's going to do. Is it going to go all the way up to the other end of the field and then turn around and say, you know what, I give up, I'm not going to do any more? Because it does sometimes. I've seen it do it. Now what's it doing? It's turning around here. And it's going to leave a massive, great, big, long stretch. All the way down across the field. Where it's not going to work on. Yep. That's what it's going to do. It's going to leave a huge, great, big, long strip like that. All the way down across the field. What possible logical reason could it have for doing that? Although... I have had a number of people say that since the 1.5 update that we had to install in order to be able to put the Platinum DLC in, um, all, all the class machinery, the Hired Help has started doing some strange things. So maybe this is one of the strange things that the Hired Help has started doing since the patch. Uh, something's happened there somewhere and it's caused it to go a little bit doolally. Uh, that's fine. I can go back over and I can um, I can soon get that last little bit in there. So long as the hired help goes and does the rest of the field, it won't be a problem. There shouldn't be any issues here whatsoever. So I'm hoping there won't. Um, kind of want to watch it, make sure it's doing all right. At the same time... Yeah. At the same time, I do also want to go and get some of that timber that we've gone and cut down. Uh, so long as this, you know, I'll tell you what, rather than going and getting the timber, what we'll do is we'll go up here and I will cut down some more of this timber. I'm going to just go with these trees that are fairly close. Oh, actually, I'll tell you what. Do we go with these or do I start clearing stuff back? You know, we're gonna, we need to start clearing stuff back for the sheep. we got to start clearing some um, stuff back so that we can make room for the sheep pens that we're going to want to install and we're going to need to go back quite a way we're going to be putting in a large sheep pen but we've also got to make room for another large sheep pen on top of that we do have to make sure that we've got a reasonable amount of space cleared back in here and that could take a bit so we'll start working on that i think that's just that's, that's quite an important thing to do we've got nowhere near enough room cleared at the moment so that's what we're going to do. I'm, I'm going to work on this a little bit until I get the message come up to say that the sprayer is finished. Because we watched the sprayer working for a bit. And it's um, not so exciting that we need to watch the whole thing. Um, let's bring that back over this way. So I've got it. It's a job to tell sometimes. Right, I think that's got it properly. Bring you back over here a little bit, and then dump that down there, and there is the first piece cut. Right. Onwards. We've got a lot to cut. It would be good if I had a spare 180,000 so that I could see where exactly we're going to put this uh, sheet pen. That's one thing that I don't like about the way that it works at the moment. Um, like, it would be really nice if you could have a look at the pen... If you could just take it, because you're not placing it, you're not actually buying it until you click where you want it to go. So it would be really good if we could take the pen and not be told before we click on it you can't afford it. Right? It would be nice if you could have the pen and you could put it into the placement bit and start adjusting it and seeing where you want to put it and see how big it is without actually having to have the money to pay for it. That would be a really, really cool thing. I don't know if there's a mod that allows you to do that. Um, obviously, I don't want to be able to buy it. I definitely don't want to be able to buy it unless I've got the money right there. But being able to just use it for a little bit, just, just to pick it up and, and test it, that, that would be pretty cool. There is one way that we might be able to do it. Um... It does mean doing stuff that I said I didn't want to do. Which is borrow more money. And I did specifically say that I don't want to borrow money. But maybe we can do that. Let's just go over and check how our sprayer is doing a minute. Let's 
Coming back up through and... Okay, the sprayer is doing really well. We'll leave that one going down through there. So we go in here. We don't want the landscaping bit. We want here. We want animal pens. The large chicken coop right there. You don't have enough money. So I can't get it from there and check. That's 300,000. Large pig enclosure is quarter of a million. And that one's 180,000. So I need 180 grand to be able to do it. So if I go there and go into here. Oh, I can't borrow. Right, I'm not allowed to borrow any money. I don't have sufficient cash to be able to borrow anything. I've got a half a million dollar loan at the moment. That is maximum loan that I can take out. And I'm not allowed to borrow anymore. I was thinking I would borrow 180000 so that I could then go and look at where it was and then repay it all. Although the only downside to that is I wouldn't be able to repay the whole lot because I'm on negative money at the moment anyway. So that wouldn't necessarily work out all that well, would it? Um, right, we've got one more little bit to do over here. What I'm going to do is I will do this one strip over here. Then I will go back and I will put the rest of the herbicide that we've got in that tank beside the sheep. I will gather that up and I will um, put that into this machine right here. And then we'll just store it in this machine. I know in real life you wouldn't do that. You don't store herbicide all made up. You Well, you actually... it. it you wouldn't have very much left at all. You calculate when you're doing it. You calculate exactly how much you're going to need, and well, this is what I've been told because I've never been involved with spray. I did it like once, and someone else did everything for me. All I did was drive around the field. Um, but you, you calculate everything that you need for your spray job, and you make up exactly the right amount of chemicals. And they're quite particular. People who do this for a living are quite particular about how much is made up how much is used, and, and so on and so forth. So you don't have stuff left over at the end. One, the massive environmental impact of having to dispose of the chemical afterwards, which is a difficult thing to do. Um, but the other thing is that these chemicals are not cheap. The last thing you want to do is to make up 300 litres too much um, and then not have to actually use it. It's, it's, it's very, very expensive to use these chemicals. Um, so nobody's going to want to be using up these chemicals and not... Uh, no one's going to want to be you know, like sticking them into the machine and not using them up um, and, and just chucking them away, because that is a lot of money to be throwing away. Now, we shouldn't have very much that we need to do with this one. A quick hose off like that is pretty much clean anyway. We've hardly done anything to it. Um, and if you were cleaning this one properly, what you do is you make sure there's no residue, make sure there's no chemical left in it. Then you fill it up with water and rinse it out a couple of times. And then, um, as far as I know, what they also do is after filling it up with water, they also run it for a while with the water going out through the nozzles and properly purge every single little part of the machine. Okay, we need to repair that one. Properly purge every single part of the machine of any chemical residues whatsoever. So it's only water is the last thing inside the tank. Um, and the last bit of water, a lot of farmers will actually take that and they'll go and spray the last bit of water out on the field or uh, stuff like that. But, well, they, they used to. I, I don't really know why. Maybe it was just like a couple of places that I heard of and that was just how they got rid of the like the, the water residue type thing. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really sure. Maybe it was a, um, a calibration thing, but I know that they used to go out with tank loads of water and, and do stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, so yeah, don't, don't, don't quote me on any part of that bit. Now, you will go and change your wheels back over. That's it now. That's, that's the final job. So the only thing I've got left to do is maybe cut down a few more trees and get a... This one needs to stop here. We'll change these wheels back over. Customize. And we will go to wide tires and weight. No, I'm just going to go wide tires. I'm not going to take the weights. Customize. Yes. Right. And put that one back on. That one's now ready to go for our next harvest. I'm going to bring him back there a minute. Like that. He's ready to roll. This one over here, we could go and do a bit of stump grinding if we wanted to. I've got... I think maybe I cut down a few more trees. 
And then we can get a load of timber. We, we've got to clear some more trees, so we may as well do a little bit of it. And th there's quite a few trees here, so if we, we could do a little bit for the rest of this episode, just, just clearing some trees. And then in our next episode, we'll be ready to fast forward some time a bit and ready to start doing some uh, harvesting. We, we, we've got the, the next round of harvesting to do, and we can find out just how much money we're going to make. 40 grand would get us a new chicken pen, or the, the big chicken pen, and then obviously we're going to need a bit more money besides to buy the chickens and get the egg pallets as well, because I do want egg pallets. I don't want to be doing it with the, the little boxes, because that's, that's just going to take too long. So we, we will be using the big egg pallets for it. And take that one off down there, like that. Um, so we... We want to get the chickens, and with all the barley that we'll have in storage, that's going to be pretty good. I'd, I'd be quite pleased with that. We mo won't necessarily get rid of, uh, or keep all of the barley, though, because, I mean, at the moment we've got this 50,000 litres. Barley right now is 390. I don't know. We've got it on hard economic difficulty, so I'm not really sure what a good price of barley is just yet. Because remember, this is the 150. It's 150%, this one is. So whatever the base one uh, setting is, we, we then kind of need to find out roughly what's a good price. Wool, we know that anything over 1,000 is good. Um, silage, we know that anything over 250 is good, but it does go as high as 300. So silage, we can get some good prices and wool. As for milk and eggs, I've got no clue whatsoever at the moment. Uh, same with straw, though I think... Pretty sure that straw was up like 70 or 80 when we sold it last time. So it can definitely be better than that. Um, but I don't know what these prices are. So it's, it's going to be interesting to sort of find out what prices we want for this stuff. How much we're actually going to want for this. Let's bring you over. And I still haven't decided what my minimum sell is going to be. That's another thing that we need to figure out is, with grain, what is our minimum sell? We can go anything over the minimum sell if we want to. We don't have to do it in exact portions. But what's the minimum sell going to be? Now, this is very strange. Right? That's moving. My joystick, the dead zone, according to the game is 14% dead zone, so it shouldn't be moving, but my, my joystick is still moving it. And I, I've, I've got no reason why it should be moving unless the actual joystick is broken or there's something gone wrong with the joystick. I'm having to actually physically hold the joystick back a bit. Now, a 14% dead zone, according to the settings of the game, shouldn't be doing that. So either my joystick is on the blink, or it's something to do with the settings, and the 14% dead zone is not actually enough, and I need to increase it. So I'm, I'm going to have a little, another little look at that and, and have a bit of a play around with it, because this is really starting to irritate me, the fact that we've, we've got this thing going on like this. It definitely shouldn't be happening. There's, there's definitely something going wrong there somewhere. Um, I kind of hope that there is it's just the setting in the game, um, because if it's not just a setting in the game, it means my joystick is on the blink. And that means I've got to go and get a new joystick, and I don't really want to have to do that. I'd, I'd, I'd rather avoid that. Okay, now we come back over this way, and there's two trees there, two big trees. That's why I'm going in here. I want to get both of them. I want to get those two. Look at them. Great big trees there. Great big trees equals great big money. All right, all you've got to do is line up one tree and, and grab it. There we go, like that, and drop down like that. And we get that tree there, and then I'm just going to bring it over this way a bit. Lift it up a bit as well. There, all of that tree there is a nice big chunk of money, and then I'll go and grab the next one as well, so we get another big chunk of money. And I think I might get the thingy and we will load up this timber then once we've done that i'll just put that one down there because that's a, a dead one that we, we want to get rid of so i'm going to get this other tree over here grab you go forward a little bit go on we can do this i have complete faith in me and there we go right 
Bring you back over here. And that one's not quite as big as the other one that we chopped down, but it's still pretty good. So I'll whack that one off of there. And as soon as that's done, I will move back out of the way so that my truck can get in. I'll put this one way back over here so it's properly out of the way. Swivel that round like that. There we go. Right, and shut you off. Yeah, see, it's it's moving back slightly. The, 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 the game's telling me I've got a 14% dead zone, but I don't think that I've got a 14% dead zone at all. Unless there's something very strange going on with the whole thing. Not quite... I'm, I, I'm really confused about that. I, I really am. Right, I think we've got just enough time to go and do a little bit of timber loading. So let's go into here. At the moment, i got two piles. I want that to go down to one pile while we're working on the hill. And... Right, auto load is on the right at the moment. That should be okay. So we will go like that. And yes, I have just changed the time scale there. So we're on 30 times speed while we're doing all of our loading. And set it to loading. Like this. And hopefully it will actually load. I forgot to take the chainsaw and cut up that um, log that I had. The, you know, the little part one on that other tree. So I'll have to go and do that. That's on my to-do list now. And you and you up there. And then we are going to swing in round this way. Straighten up a little bit. And then I want to go up here because I want to be able to get these trees, these logs that are hidden up in here. Not ideal because of where they are, but the, at least we are loading them. At least I am actually getting them loaded. So there's those there and then I got three more in there which I don't... Ooh, okay, I am going to get them. I didn't think I'd actually get those. I didn't think I'd reach them. There's, there's one more in there that I can't reach. And if I come down this side, I'm not going to be reaching him anyway. Because he's going to be on the wrong side of the truck now. Let's stop you there a second. And uh, O to change sides and then B to start it loading again. There we go. So that's done that bit. And then O to change sides again and then B to start loading. Going down the hill while loading doesn't load it as well. Definitely doesn't load it as well. Uh, switch over and do that. So I get those two. Switch over again. Can I get all of these on a single... I don't think I can. Not like that, I can't. Definitely not like that, I can't. <laughs> Hi, right, excuse me. Okay, let's try that again. I got that log down there. Got him. Ideal. Right, now go over here. I might just be able to get them all. I might just. It's going to be pretty close. I get that one there. Oh, it's gone to the, the top. I didn't expect it to go for that one. I thought it would just go for this one down here. So there's a little tiny one right there. And then there's two more. That little tiny one we missed completely. And because it missed and dumped it over the other side, it's immediately decided that it doesn't like it. There we go. We've got that one now. Um, switch sides again and press B once more and then head up. And this is the last little bit. So going up the hill does it very nicely and that's actually decided it doesn't want to load anymore but that's actually going to be just fine for us as well because I've kind of run out of logs. Um, we've run out of room on the truck and we've run out of logs. So that's, that's a good thing. We bring this down and we'll dump it here in the yard and then we will go and get the rest of what we've cut over there. So it's not going to be quite a full load. That's fine. doesn't have to be a full load every time. And press Y. That's, uh, I've set that to Y. I don't remember what it was set on, but I changed the key binding on it because it wasn't working properly before. Um, I'll unload all of that one there. And as soon as this is unloaded, like that... I'll now go off and I will get those other bits of timber that we've chopped and dropped down over there. That small tractor, our little electric tractor, I could actually put that one back in the shed. 
That would have been better. It would be out the way then, properly. Okay. Let's go over to you. We've got these all neat and tidy down one side, so it should make life a little bit easier for us. Grab those there. I'm going to drive straight into this bit. I'm actually going to get my chainsaw out here and chop that one up. Right. Now we can carry on and do this bit. We're just going to get the rest of these. I don't want to do it like that. Actually, you know what? I'm going to swap over and pick that one up and then swap over again and go back. This is why when you're going around a corner whilst picking up these logs, you really do have to inch quite slowly because otherwise it just drifts you ever so slightly out of range of the, the log. It drops it up. It, it lets go of it up in the air and then drifts you out of range and you can't actually pick the thing up. And it's a jolly nuisance. It's an absolute jolly nuisance. Now, we'll bring you back this way like that. Yeah, and slide all the logs back along the bed of the truck. Then we'll come in here. And we should be able to get all the rest of them loaded. Didn't like that one up there, did it? I don't know why it didn't like that one up there. But we have got them all loaded. They're all in. And I've just got these here. Perfect. Absolutely spot on perfect. Right. Now I can reverse out of here. We'll go and dump these in the middle of the yard as well. We'll take it off of the 30 times speed. There. We'll go back to 5 times speed. We'll bring these out. We've got a nice bit of room here now. I did say I was going to put leave a tree, didn't I? I was talking about that as leave a tree in the middle for the sheep. And now I've not done it. Hmm. That was a bit daft, wasn't it? Had that all planned. I was talking about that ages ago. I remember now. It's a bit late. I've gone and cut the trees down. We'll have to go. We'll have to go and plant a tree. I think you can. There are trees. There's, there's mods where you can buy trees. So we might do something like that. If we if we buy a tree, we we could do that. That would work. Now I'll bring you over to there. Something like that, I think. And then unload this one. Unload it nice and quick like that. I'm gonna just go forward a little bit to try and line that up a bit better. There we go. Right, see, unloading, it does like that. But if I go straight to load again, it's not going to load properly right where it is. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to turn around like this. And go this side of the pile. Bring it along like that. And then I want to load from here. But what i got to do first is i got to press enter on the number pad on my keyboard. And um, that now gives me two piles which is what we need, and then I can start loading, and it should load the first pile, start with, oh, let's load, yes, there we go, right, it's loading on the right side, and this is where I need to inch along really, really slowly and carefully, and it will automatically change over and start loading the rear load, as soon as it fills up the front part, as soon as it fills up the front stack, it will change over and start loading the second stack. So we'll see how much of a stack we get in there. I have run out of time, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up the load, but I'm not going to sell it. This is going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. This is all we're going to be doing today. Um, so, and yeah, in our next episode, we will take the timber up and we will sell it. And then we will start fast forwarding time even more so that we are ready to start our next harvest. If you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And there we go. There is our full load on there. Strap that one down. That is ready to go to sell. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. There we go. Wonderful. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.